Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2! And something a little different than you're used to seeing. An entirely new map pool! Seven new maps, winners and finalists from the Team Liquid Map Contest. The Electronic Sports League ESL has set them up and we will be playing, at least in professional tournaments, the latter very soon. Not soon TM, soon. That's a direct quote. We'll also be featuring these. And, and it's already brought some interesting strategies and players back to the ESL Cup. Of course, I'm going to need to kind of speed this up for reasons that should become clear momentarily. But in the bottom left, one of the most exciting and arguably the best North American player, the Canadian Zerg, Scarlet, playing Zerg, which is not always a guarantee nowadays. Um, but she's up against her teammate, and she's got one drone up against her teammate, who is manipulating those SCV- It's Beyond. It's Beyond. Beyond is building two racks. The map is called Data C. We got our water map. Units float up if they get hit hard enough. Uh, very excited for that. That's like half of the clips on water maps. Scarlet, not super hyped about this. And uh, so I, I believe the technical term for what this is, is bullshit. Because Beyond has already figured out a spot where like three quarters of the places the SCVs go. Um, they can't be hit by drones. So this is, um, yeah. Well, so this is how this is going to start. Scarlet. <laughs> An interesting blitz, just the two racks, and it was spotted so early, but Scarlet couldn't even delay it. There is a Reaper on the way, as as gas is being mined by Beyond, with the, only the two racks. Not a huge commitment in Legacy of the Void. So here we are. This is how it starts. This is our first experience uh, in the new map pool, is Beyond finding a disgusting two racks location. There's also the ramp looks larger than a normal ramp. It's a normal ramp size. It's just kind of weirdly angled. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, the map's on the smaller side. Uh, though I don't have any numbers to back that up. It just kind of, like, the numbers I have to back it up are, it kind of looks pretty small, though. Uh, most of the bases are far off to the sides as opposed to the center, which does lead itself to a more drawn- Oh! I'm sorry, I, I interrupted myself. It, it leads itself to a little bit more of a drawn-out late game if we get there. Neither of these players, uh inexperienced in those late game scenarios though I don't think either of them super hyped uh, to rush there now beyond a couple reapers the barrack scout did you know a flying rax moves faster than an overlord without speed fun fact not if you're zerg scarlet shames that extractor for not killing the, the reapers maybe some misguided uh, aggression there bit of creep spread between the bases. The Rex will be burning soon. The other Rex is headed home over the... Oh my god, the fish. Oh, it's so beautiful. Apparently, by the way, there's some lore to this map. I was looking over the descriptions of, of the new maps. I mean, they are, like, in the Team Liquid Map Contest and stuff. We've seen them to some extent. But this map has actual lore. Apparently, some important, like, alien artifact crashed at the bottom of an ocean of a planet called Data C, which I don't know why it, why it's called... Anyways, so, important artifact, and now we gotta fight over it, because whoever gets the artifact is gonna, is gonna be better off than whoever doesn't get it. So, you know, as things go. Zeratul could've told you that one, but, like... Usually, usually map makers' descriptions are like, this is a pretty standard map, but also it has, like, waterfalls or lava pools. But, like, a reason to fight. I appreciate that. Though I did forget who made it. Um, I do apologize for that. Maybe, maybe at some point, uh, somebody will remind me. Trisha. <clears throat> Three CC and beyond. Stop trying to make banshees happen! It's 2022! Banshees aren't going to happen! He keeps... This is the classic Beyond. Like, every, like, I don't know, few months, he tries to bring back builds from five to ten years. Yep. <laughs> I 
uh, five to ten years ago. And uh, Hellion Banshee is one of those. Now, it's not that Hellion Banshee is necessarily bad. It's just the return on investment of your average Banshee. With Cloak, uh, importantly, like that Cloak, extra 100 gas, uh, and the tech lamp on the starport. It, it rarely pays off, in my opinion. But Banshees are one of the most micro-intensive units in the game, so it's not surprising Beyun keeps trying to make it work, because that's how Beyun do. Made by Killer Smile. Ooh. Uh, hero's nickname, and also great map maker. That's a good. That's a good idea. All right. I, I, definitely better than some of us here casting. So. Spire, on the way. A spire, obviously, a strong choice. Whenever you get any sort of map control, the Mutas, yes, risky, fragile. But they are the best option in the mid game if you actually have space. Because the best defense against Mutas is a good offense. And a lot of the time in a more standard game that doesn't start with a two racks not really happening, uh, the Terran player will have built up to Stim and Metavax by the time Mutas come out. And that kind of precludes the phase of the game where Mutas are able to keep the Terran on the back foot. But when you go for triple CC after a two racks in the Cloak Banshee, well, guess what? You don't have particularly quick. There's a lot of things, but the, the main thing is Metavax. The Mutas are already going to be out. And by the time the Metavax are out, the Mutas will be across the map. Yeah, a few Hellions. The creep spreading widely here. Fourth base for Scarlet. 76 drones. If she can keep... Wait, where are the Evo Chambers? Any upgrade? No upgrades. So... Well, it's going to be 0-0. Zero, zero. Be on it. Halfway to 1-1. One, one. Oh, he smelled the Mutas, but just a bit too late. The water diluted it. And now into the main. Already Marines scrambling back. Seven, eight SCVs down. The Mutas get out. And this is the best case scenario. With the Mutalist at this stage of the game. Oh, gets the Banshee, because why not? Banshee has to recloak. Going to be out of energy for any fight past this. So now Beyond has to fight. Uh, very hard to pick the timing to move out. Because Scarlet, one, will have very active scouting. Those Mutas, there's nothing much more active than being in your opponent's base. And uh, two, Creep Spread is already halfway across the map. There's been very little ability to challenge the creep spread with what Beyond's had so far. So, Baneling speed is done. Speed everything is done. It's a priority for Zergs. We got Overlord, Zergling, and Baneling speed at this stage. Single medevac headed out. Beyond, uh, throwing Hellbats into the mix just as the armory finishes. Their best possible purpose is dying to Banelings instead of Marines doing so. And this is about as close as the army supplies are going to get at this rate. Scarlet with the 86 drones. No macro hatch, but getting a fifth hatchery. A few mutas towards the north side. Scarlet actually stopped at the first seven. So it's not mass mutalisks. It's just lings and banes underneath. There is one more muta on the way. I said that. And then she made plus two more mutas. So I don't know what she saw. But Scarlet is going down the mutalisk road. Well, flying down the mutalisk highway. Something... Any... More mutas. Uh, infestation pit is done. Hive begins. Whole lot of wings and bits. Scout is ready for this. One one's not done, though. No widow mind. It's a retreat to be young. Going to the high ground. Banelings rolling forward. A couple widow mines coming up. The tech lab factory. Very important and very vulnerable right now. Beyun can't really afford to lose a fight. Only on three bases. Big middle mine hit. Uh, just on Zerglings. Banelings. Oh, Mutas getting a little ahead of themselves with the Banelings rolling in. The Tech Lab start. The factory is vulnerable. 12 SCVs go down. Kind of collateral damage in this fight. Scarlet, maybe a little bit of a mismanagement on that initial engagement. And that keeps Beyun alive for now. Scarlet still in pole position here. 
with five going on six bases, 91 drones, which is pushing it on the on the actual total. Not quite maxed out yet. Beyond is still pretty far off 2-2, two -two, which means the upgrades are even. Widow Mines drawn out by Zerglings. Muta's chasing down Metavax. The Thor adding some damage, but taking down itself. Beyond's Marines, though, on the high ground. Able to hold. Feels like Scarlet doesn't quite realize exactly how ahead she is right now. And also, you don't really want to give Beyond the opportunity to just constantly micro. Because, you know, it's Beyond. So thing is, Beyond is going to have 2-2. Ultra Lisk Cavern. Adrenal Glance. Macro Hedge done. Scarlet isn't slowing down on the climbing of the tech tree. 2-2 two -two done for Beyond. The best the upgrades are going to get. Widow Mines. God, the Marines. The supply. Beyond actually takes the supply lead very temporarily. Because those Marines are... are there's only been 32 marine losses, compared to 123 zerglings and 22 banes. Which does seem a little obscene. I'm sure that number will, will raise dramatically. What are the incomes looking like? Yeah, you can, can you tell when the meals dropped? Not enough, though, to even things out. The rest of the upgrades coming up, Scarlet. Adding in Ultralisks. Beyond's fourth, not too far outside of the... Oh, it's a rich Vespine base. Exciting. Always a point of contention. And those are the most vulnerable bases on the low ground in the center. Oh, those Widow Mines. What? Ah! Okay. Two Widow Mines triggered. Scarlet adding another round of Banelings. Two twos done. She's maxed out. Titan is planning still pretty far off. I think it's time to go. It's about the best the upgrades and the supply is going to get for now. So here come the Banelings. First round, eat Widow Mines, eat the brunt of it. Some of them taken now. Scarlet lining up for another attack. Ultra show it up to the party. The Banelings should be rolling through. Yes, the factory itself and a Widow Mine behind the factory did a huge amount of damage. Oh my god, Beyond just cleans it up. Scarlet rebuilds immediately, so freeing up supply for more Ultras. We don't mind getting so much damage. A Mavac full of Marines, for some reason, was boosted into the front. Beyond maybe a little bit adamant about reinforcing. Ultra speed is on the way. This has not been a particularly cost-effective fight here for Scarlet as Beyond's Marines continue to hold the line after the Widowmines thin out the front lines. But... Four. Yes, it's going to be five Ultras. El Chapo Lisks. All the upgrades. Everything you could want besides maybe a diet plan. Ultras working in towards the fourth. Mainling zoning out the SCVs in the most dramatic and murdery pop possible way. The Ultra gunned down by... Pretty much all the bio left. More ultras to the southern side. Scarlet still had 90 drones and half the map, whereas Beyond is struggling to maintain one mining base. 19 SCVs down, but Beyond is ahead on supply. 132 army supply. But another round of mainlings. Widow mines taken out by the Mutus. Enough of them to one shot mines, and I think. Very, enough to uh, one-shot Metavax as well. Another Ultra Creep is spreading on the Beyond's doorstep. Couple Ultras getting drawn into the army. All the DPS is concept. Somehow Beyond is maxed out. 3-3 three, three is closing in too, so it's, uh, it's about as good of a time for Beyond to fight as he could. Beautiful splits back. The Marauders in front. The Marines doing what they can. The Ultras evaporating. The Mutas cannot challenge this. Beyond tearing through the front and cleaning up the rest. On to the creep. 3-3 done now. Scarlet still about 20 seconds up. Just stimming through the creep. There's no time to wait for creep here. The only chance is to go for the production. The hatcheries cut everything off and break it down piece by piece. Banelings, nine ultralisks in production. How has it come to this? 
Beyond. No ghosts. I don't even think there's a ghost to get it. I think nine ultras. The, the metavacs are almost out of energy just from healing the stims, but there goes the baneling nest. A pretty important part of this. More banelings trying to roll in. Those ones may be a little off where they should be. Beyond. Scarlet may have been playing with her food for so long, it, it picked up a whole bunch of guns and started shooting back. And right now, a bit of a concerning scenario. Scarlet still has a ton of map control with 11 mutas on the way. Creep spread. Beyond made no attempt to get rid of the creep spread here. So, yes. Scarlet lost. Probably more than she should have, but a lot less than she could have. And the ultras are marching. How many, like, let alone ghosts, just marauders? Eh, there's a dozen or so. Widow Mines, of course, can take a big chunk out of that HP. Scout at 152 supply. The worker counts are even, which is, you know, highly concerning. The changeling, yeah, let's, let's go. Reinforcements have arrived. Wait a second. I don't recognize you guys. Not that it's going to be surprising where the army is here. Beyond trying to pick fights because still, Scarlet has most of the map. If she's able to rebuild, oh god, that widow mine hit. Got most, if not all, all the banelings. Does she have a ba She didn't rebuild the bane nest. Oh no. Well, both these players playing very much like themselves. Beyond is microing units that start with M until the end of time. And Scarlet is practicing for Major League Baseball. I don't, I don't want to call it a throw, but it certainly, it certainly was not an efficient, it, it's a throw, it's a throw, okay, like, I don't, it, there have been some horrible fights here, Beyond, to his credit, has made those happen, but, Scarlet is now, Beyond has lifted his mane, to a convenient base not too far to the south. Of course, going to be difficult to defend. Beyond with 24 marines, or 29 marines and 24 marauders. It's just mines, marines, medevacs, and marauders. Beyond is in his element right now. The M and M and M. And M. M and M. You know what I mean. Scarlet counterattack. Greater Spire on the way. Uh, so check that off your bingo card. Oh my. A bit of a disaster here. Infestors are out. Which... Infestor Ultra. They're scanned, but there are no ghosts. One set of fungals. The Ling's trying to go forward and eat the mine hit. Successful so far. Trying to pin these units. Beautiful fungal. Ultras chopping through. Looking for more. The Metamax themselves. It's just Ultra Fester. What? Uh, <laughs> the Marauder is just getting knocked into the sky. Two Ultras back. One Ultra left. More Zerglings trickling in. The Ultra goes down, but the Zerglings might overrun the reinforcements. Scarlet. By, with every single Ultra is finally able to break the base. One ultra less and be on holds. Just ridiculous. The orbital barely lifts in time. Oh yeah, remember mutas? Two command centers canceled. Yeah, at this point, I guess you're gonna need the money. Scout has lost 5,000, over double the gas. And 6,000 more minerals. Which is not great economically in the long term, but is definitely making things more interesting because beyond in a slightly worse engagement, any of these probably is already out of the game, but here we are. Ultra Infester against Bio. Oh god, the splits. The mine chasing down the Bane things. Meanwhile, I guess we're base trading because of course we are. Ultras in production, a bit of a desperation move, but still a few of infestors alive. Orbital goes down. 
More mines taken out. Reinforcements might be able to engage the mutas. Biana's ahead on supply again, but awkwardly... Wait, no, no. That's Biana. 39 workers. Another mine hits. Scarlet! Does Scarlet have Burrow? I'm just saying. I don't... The orbitals are running low, both on energy and in number. Uh, investors, already a risk. There's a, a premium on scans. I'm just saying. Burrow would be quite nice. Widowminds know all about it. I do have the indicators on this map. The little, uh, like, terrazine pockets or whatever. I guess not terrazine, it's green. But it's very cool. Unobtainium. Oh no. The Zerglings getting a little distracted. The Ultras in the middle of the map! The Investors are just rolling through everything! A tsunami underwater here as the Zerg wave rolls in and the tide sweeps away beyond just like that. That's how close it was. For about 10 minutes, that's how close it was. Make no mistake, it wasn't that Scarlet was playing particularly bad. It was just Beyond never, ever got caught until that moment. And just a little bit too much. And that's why there was very little micro on the right side. is because the focus was on drawing Beyond's attention away. Scarlet loses 5,000 more gas, 3,000 more minerals, and one less games. So, off to a start. That is one of... Oh, that's a roller coaster. Um. Ah. Uh, I. The words. All right. And now we're going from under the sea up into the sky, past the sky, into space, onto the moon. Um. Or a moon. I don't know. Get your dancing shoes out. We're going to moon dance, which also is. Probably the most interesting and and maybe the most vetoed map we're going to see in the new pool. But, Beyond, don't you... So, immediately, pocket base. There's a pocket base. A wide open main with a whole lot of area to, to jump in. Or drop, or air units, whatever. And then there's a pocket base at the back with six mineral patches and one gas. Compared to the eight mineral patches and two gas at your standard base. But, so this creates uh, we haven't had one of these maps in, in quite a bit and also <clears throat> well we haven't had one of the maps and also uh it's not the only one i believe stargazer is also a semi-pocket based map in the new map pool so we'll see how it plays out i do like that it, it, it isn't as valuable like you don't get as much potential mining or as many minerals out of it but it does give you something like a bit of a trade-off mm -hmm. is this is beyond going through beyond's like did you see how large that reaper cliff is they should have just named the map a reaper cliff it's like beyond that's not very creative it's like, well, Winter said it, not me. Wait a sec. <laughs> ah, he, he's going threepers. The two racks at the front. Scarlet. It, Scarlet has already gone for a pool first. Maybe as a potential counter. Um... And she is mining gas already, so that means we'll have access to Zergling Speed soon. Beyond is just going to go three regs. Okay, all right, so we're just... Remember when I said Beyond's like, every once in a while Beyond just decides to kind of like do an update and see whether those five-year-old builds are still working? Well... <laughs> uh, looks like two games in a row. <laughs> Important questions being asked, like, how did that Reaper die? I microed so perfectly.
Well, so this is already kind of a disaster. Beyond isn't in trouble, but this is not nearly... It might be because the queen shouldn't have even been there at this stage. Because, uh, pool first. But also... The age is messed up the way. <laughs> Because of the layout of the map, Scarlet's not going to be able to punish Beyond in any significant way. But but like last game, I don't I don't think that's what Scarlet is intending to do to get ahead. Like when you're ahead, get more ahead. So taking the pocket base, adding a second guess. I think we're going to see pretty quick Spire again. Uh, Banelink. She wouldn't actually just go for the Banelink bust, right? I mean, that would be surprising. And if the Reapers didn't notice it, it might work. Oh my. Oh no. Well, away we go. Yeah. That Banley Nest is finished. She Banshee on the way. This one makes a lot more sense considering the situation. The Reapers did not see the Langs. So we could be off to a... Uh, will the Banshee be done? Yes. Will that matter? Well, there's also a secondary wall on the high ground. That is important to note here. That secondary wall... Well, I guess 11 Bane Licks. Ah. Uh, huh. Well. Hmm. Well, walls aren't units. Very important to note. Well, Banshee's finishing, but hello, we've arrived. The Banelings gonna crash through the second wall. The untried to target, but already off to a rough start on that. And Scarlet's in the main. There are still more Banelings. The Un gets the target fire, but there's no other units. SCVs aren't aren't great at fighting greater numbers of Zergling. I think Scarlet just won. And it's over. All right. And that, it just kind of ends. <laughs> so, no drawn out roller coaster this time around. Beyond just gets backhanded and then front handed. As Scarlet uh, shows him that just because you have a pocket base isn't going to save you from getting hit directly in the face. Well, that 3cc build didn't work out. The Reapers didn't work out. Game one, honestly, probably shouldn't, but beyond uh, getting kind of skill checked here. I'll say it. Uh, you can't just do five-year-old builds and micro on a bunch and get away with it, beyond. You can't keep doing that. I mean, against many players, you can, but Scarlet comes out ahead on this one of the Shopify team kill. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to be having more matches on more of the new maps, so tune in every day uh, or else you'll you'll or else you'll have to tune in later in which case you'll be behind then you have to catch up after liking and subscribing so uh check those out every day good luck have fun i'll see you next time stay tuned